Ever had a bad day and thought, well, at least I didn't get mauled by a bear or fall out of a plane? If not, you're about to. Welcome to the world of historical figures who laughed in the face of danger, danced with death, and said, not today, thanks. These are the stories of people who survived against all odds, making your worst day look like a walk in the park. So buckle up, grab your lucky rabbit's foot, and let's dive into the unbelievable, the incredible, and the downright lucky tales of history's most resilient survivors. Spoiler alert, it's going to be a wild ride. The Unsinkable Hugh Glass. In the annals of tough-as-nails historical figures, Hugh Glass holds a special place. His story is one part survival epic, one part revenge thriller, and all what? parts, how on earth did he manage that? Glass. An American frontiersman in the early 19th century wasn't just tough. He was the kind of tough that makes a grizzly bear think twice. Our story begins in 1823, with Glass part of a fur trapping expedition in South Dakota. Things were going fine, until one day Glass stumbled upon a mother grizzly bear. And as we all know, mother bears are about as forgiving as a parking ticket inspector. The bear attacked, leaving Glass severely mauled and barely clinging to life. His expedition buddies, thinking he was as good as gone, left him behind. But Hugh Glass wasn't the type to let something like a near-fatal bear attack stop him. What followed was a survival story for the ages. Glass, with a broken leg, festering wounds, and no weapons, began crawling. Yes, crawling. He dragged himself over 200 miles through hostile territory, braving the elements, wild animals, and the occasional unfriendly Native American tribe. His diet? Mostly berries and roots, and on a good day, some scavenged meat from wolf leftovers. It's like the worst camping trip you can imagine, but with more bears and less marshmallows. But Glass wasn't just fueled by the will to survive, he was also driven by the desire for revenge. He wanted to find the men who left him for dead. After weeks of crawling, floating down rivers, and generally defying every odd, Glass reached Fort Kiowa, alive but probably not ready for a magazine cover shoot. In the end, Glass did find the men who abandoned him, but in a twist of anticlimactic mercy, he spared their lives. Maybe he figured surviving was revenge enough, or maybe he was just too tired for more drama. Hugh Glass's story is a testament to human resilience, the will to survive, and the ability to hold a grudge. It's a tale that makes our daily struggles seem a bit more manageable. After all, if Hugh Glass can crawl 200 miles after a bear attack, you can probably make it through that Monday morning meeting. Rasputin, the man who wouldn't die. Next up in our parade of improbable survivors is Grigory Rasputin, the Russian mystic who seemed to have more lives than a cat with a cheat code. Rasputin's story is like a mix of a soap opera and a horror movie, with a dash of historical drama thrown in for good measure. Rasputin, a man of humble origins, rose to prominence in the Russian court thanks to his alleged healing powers and his uncanny ability to influence the royal family. But not everyone was a fan. In fact, some folks were so not fans that they decided Rasputin needed to go, permanently. The first attempt on Rasputin's life was like something out of a cartoon. In 1914, a woman stabbed him, proclaiming him to be the Antichrist. Rasputin, however, just brushed it off like a bad review, surviving the attack and further cementing his reputation as a man not easily gotten rid of. But the real assassination attempt, the one that went down in history, happened in 1916. A group of nobles, led by Prince Felix Yusupov, invited Rasputin over for some cakes and wine. Little did he know, the menu included a side of cyanide. But here's where it gets weird. The poison didn't seem to affect him. Rasputin just kept on eating and drinking, probably wondering why everyone was staring at him so intently. Frustrated and probably a bit freaked out, the conspirators shot Rasputin, which finally seemed to do the trick. Except it didn't. Rasputin got up and tried to escape. It took two more shots, a severe beating, and a plunge into the icy Neva River to finally end his saga. Even then, rumors persisted that he'd survived, because at this point, why not? Rasputin's death was as dramatic and mysterious as his life. He became a legend, a symbol of the turmoil and excesses of the Russian court. His ability to survive multiple assassination attempts, at least for a while, 
added to his mystique and made him a subject of fascination for generations to come. So, next time you have a bad day, just remember Rasputin. It could be worse. You could be getting poisoned, shot, and thrown into a freezing river all in one evening. Julianne Kupka, the 17-year-old who fell from the sky. Now let's take to the skies, or rather fall from them, with Julian Koepsha, a 17-year-old who turned a terrifying plane crash into an unbelievable tale of survival. It's like the universe said, let's see how you handle this one. And Julianne was like, challenge accepted. The date was December 24th, 1971, and Julianne was on Lanza Flight 508, flying over the Peruvian rainforest. Talk about a nightmare before Christmas. The plane was struck by lightning, disintegrated in midair, and Julianne found herself plummeting two miles to the ground, strapped to her seat. It's the kind of freefall that would make even the most seasoned skydiver say, nope. Miraculously, Julianne survived the fall. Thanks to the dense rainforest canopy and her seat acting like a makeshift parachute, she landed with relatively minor injuries. Now, if this were a movie, this is where the credits would roll. But for Julianne, this was just the beginning. Alone in the rainforest with only a bag of candy as provisions, Julianne embarked on an 11-day trek to find help. She navigated through the dense jungle, dealing with insects, dangerous animals, and the constant threat of getting lost. It's like a really intensive version of Girl Scouts. Using survival skills she learned from her father, who was a biologist, Julianne followed a small stream, knowing it would lead to civilization. She dealt with wounds and an arm infection, all while trying to avoid the rainforest's less friendly residents. It's like man versus wild, but with a teenage girl and no camera crew. Finally, after 11 days of what can only be described as the world's worst camping trip, Julianne found a group of lumberjacks who helped her get to safety. Her story of survival became a sensation, a testament to human resilience and the will to survive against all odds. Julianne's ordeal is one of those true life stories that's so unbelievable it sounds fictional. It's a reminder that sometimes, reality is not only stranger than fiction, but also a lot more hardcore. Ernest Shackleton's Antarctic Escape Now let's chill out with Ernest Shackleton, the polar explorer who turned a disastrous Antarctic expedition into an epic tale of survival. It's like he looked at a travel brochure for Antarctica and thought, ice, isolation, and potential doom, sign me up. In 1914, Shackleton and his crew set out on the Imperial Trans-Antarctic Expedition, aiming to make the first land crossing of Antarctica. The plan was bold, the stakes were high, and the clothing was probably not as warm as they'd have liked. Their ship, the Endurance, was sturdy and well-equipped, but Antarctica was like, you're not on a cruise, buddy. The Endurance became trapped in pack ice, turning their ship into a very expensive ice sculpture. After months of waiting for the ice to thaw, spoiler, it didn't, the ship was crushed, leaving Shackleton and his crew stranded on the ice. It's like the universe was playing a game of freeze tag, and they were it. But Shackleton wasn't the type to give up. He turned his attention to getting his crew to safety, which involved an incredible journey across the ice. They trekked over frozen seas, dragging lifeboats, facing freezing temperatures, and probably regretting not packing more snacks. The real highlight of this icy saga was Shackleton's daring rescue mission. He and a few crew members embarked on an 800-mile journey in a small lifeboat, navigating through treacherous seas to reach South Georgia Island. It was like a road trip, but with more icebergs and less singing along to the radio. Once they reached the island, Shackleton trekked across uncharted mountains and glaciers to reach a whaling station. The journey was so intense that even Bear Grylls would have said, Ernest, maybe just chill. Incredibly, Shackleton managed to rescue all of his crew, despite the odds being stacked against them. It's a story of leadership, endurance, and the ability to stay cool under pressure, literally. So, next time you're stuck in traffic or your phone dies, just think of Shackleton and his crew. Suddenly, your problems might not seem so insurmountable. The Iron-Willed Admiral Yi Sun-Sin Let's set sail to 16th century Korea, where Admiral Yi Sun-Sin turned the tide against impossible odds. And no, he didn't do it by asking politely. Yi Sun-Sin was like the action hero of the Joseon dynasty, if action heroes wore cool hats and commanded fleets of warships. Admiral Yi faced a daunting challenge, repelling the Japanese invasion during the Imjin War. 
his tool for the job? The famous turtle ship, which was less about slow and steady, and more about being a floating fortress of doom. These ships were armed to the teeth and covered in spikes, making them the porcupines of the sea. Yi's most famous battle, the Battle of Myongyang, was like a scene straight out of a blockbuster movie. He was outnumbered, with only 13 ships to the Japanese fleet's 133. The odds were so against him, even Vegas wouldn't take that bet. But Yi had two things going for him, his strategic genius and a really good understanding of tides. In a masterful display of naval tactics, Yi used the strong currents of the Myongyang Strait to his advantage. The Japanese fleet, caught in the turbulent waters, struggled to maneuver. Yi's fleet, on the other hand, was like a group of synchronized swimmers. If synchronized swimmers could sink enemy ships, the result? Yi's fleet decimated the Japanese armada, sinking 31 ships without losing a single one of his own. It was the naval equivalent of a slam dunk, and it turned the tide of the war. Yi's victory was so impressive that even the Japanese commanders were like, well, we didn't see that coming. But Yi's life wasn't all smooth sailing. He faced court intrigues, was demoted and reinstated, and had to deal with enough political drama to fill a soap opera. Through it all, he remained committed to his country and his cause, proving that sometimes the best weapon is a brilliant mind and a fleet of badass turtle ships. Admiral Yi Sun Sin's story is one of resilience, tactical brilliance, and the ability to stay calm under pressure. So next time you're stuck in a difficult situation, just ask yourself, what would Admiral Yi do? Probably something awesome. Tsunano, a tale of Edo-era empowerment. Let's time travel to Edo-era Japan, where Tsunano, a woman with more determination than a cat chasing a laser pointer, decided to rewrite her own story. In a time when women's roles were more scripted than a reality TV show, Tsuneno was like, nope, I'm doing things my way. Tsuneno's life started typically enough. She was born into a respectable family, and like many women of her time, her life was a series of arranged marriages, three to be exact. But Tsuneno was not one to settle. Dissatisfied with her provincial life and the constraints placed upon her, she decided to take a bold step. And in the 19th century, bold steps for women usually didn't involve solo travel. Against all odds and societal norms, Tsuneno ran away to Edo, modern-day Tokyo, the big city full of lights, action, and hopefully more freedom. It was like a small-town girl heading to New York City, but with more kimonos and fewer Broadway shows. The journey was not easy. Imagine traveling in an era without Google Maps, Uber, or even a decent travel vlog to guide you. Tsuneno faced numerous challenges, from financial woes to the societal stigma of being a runaway woman. But she was determined to live life on her own terms. Once in Edo, Tsuneno's life was a roller coaster. She experienced the bustling city life, found work, and even remarried. Her life was a series of ups and downs, like a historical soap opera, but without the dramatic background music. Tsuneno's story is remarkable not just because she dared to defy norms, but because she left a detailed record of her experiences in letters to her family. These letters provide a unique glimpse into the life of a woman who refused to be just another character in the story of her time. So, next time you're thinking of making a bold move, just remember Tsuneno. She might not have had Google Maps, but she definitely had the right direction. The death-defying Vesna Vulovich. Now let's take to the skies with Vesna Vulovich, a flight attendant who turned a catastrophic plane crash into a record-breaking survival story. It's like she looked at the laws of physics and said, nice try, but I have other plans. Vesna's unbelievable tale of survival began on January 26, 1972. She was a flight attendant on JAT Flight 367, flying over Czechoslovakia, when suddenly the plane exploded mid-air due to a suspected bomb. Most people would consider this a bad day. Vesna, however, was about to make history. She plummeted a mind-boggling 33,000 feet, strapped to her seat, and landed in a snow-covered mountainside. It's the kind of freefall that would make even the most extreme skydivers go, nope, I'm out. But Vesna? She survived. Yes, you heard that right. She survived a fall from cruising altitude, setting a world record for surviving the highest fall without a parachute. Vesna suffered severe injuries, including a fractured skull, broken legs, and amnesia. 
She was in a coma for days, but like the absolute legend she was, she recovered. Her survival baffled doctors, scientists, and probably a few physicists who had to go back and check their calculations. The story of Vesna Vulovic is not just about surviving a plane crash, it's about beating the odds in the most spectacular way possible. It's like the universe threw her a challenge and she said, challenge accepted and conquered. Thank you very much. Harry Houdini, the great escapist. Let's unlock the story of Harry Houdini, the magician who made a career out of cheating death and picking locks, often at the same time. Houdini wasn't just a master illusionist. He was the escape artist extraordinaire, the kind of guy who looked at handcuffs and said, cute. Born Eric Weiss in Hungary, Houdini started his magic career with traditional card tricks. But let's face it, card tricks are a dime a dozen. Houdini wanted to spice things up, and boy did he. He began specializing in escape acts, because why do magic when you can dangle upside down in a straitjacket and give everyone a heart attack? Houdini's acts were the stuff of legend. He escaped from handcuffs, chains, straitjackets, and even prison cells. One of his most famous acts was the Chinese water torture cell, where he was suspended upside down in a locked glass and steel cabinet filled with water. It's like he saw a relaxing bath and thought, needs more danger. But Houdini wasn't just about the spectacle, he was a master of psychology. He understood how to build suspense and play to the audience's fears and expectations. He turned escaping into an art form, and his performances were as much about the drama as they were about the escape. Houdini's dedication to his craft was intense. He practiced holding his breath, dislocating his joints, and even regurgitating keys he'd swallowed earlier. It's like he was preparing for a career in magic, or a stint as a spy. Despite his death-defying acts, Houdini was a staunch opponent of spiritualists and mediums, often debunking their tricks. He was like the mythbuster of the supernatural world, using his knowledge of illusion to expose frauds. Houdini's legacy is one of daring, innovation, and a bit of madness. He pushed the boundaries of what was possible, both physically and mentally. So next time you're locked out of your house, just think, what would Houdini do? Then maybe just call a locksmith. The Lone Journey of Genghis Khan. Now let's gallop into the steppes of Mongolia with Genghis Khan a man who turned a tough childhood into an empire-building spree. Before he was the fearsome ruler of the largest contiguous empire in history, he was just Temujin, a kid with a knack for survival and a future in world domination. Temujin's early life was like a survival reality show, minus the camera crew and the promise of a cash prize. After his father was poisoned by a rival tribe, young Temujin and his family were abandoned by their clan. It's like being unfriended on social media, but with more dire consequences. Life on the Mongolian steppes was no picnic, especially if you were an outcast. Temujin's family lived in poverty, eating roots and fish instead of the usual Mongolian barbecue. But Temujin didn't let a little thing like societal abandonment dampen his spirits. He was determined to survive and maybe get a little revenge along the way. As a teenager, Temujin's life took a turn for the worse when he was captured by a rival tribe. He spent his days wearing a wooden collar and doing menial tasks, which was probably not how he envisioned his teenage years. But Temujin was as slippery as an eel, and he eventually escaped, because who needs a wooden collar when you're destined for greatness? After his escape, Temujin began his rise to power. He made alliances, defeated rivals, and united the Mongolian tribes under his rule. It's like he was collecting tribes like some people collect stamps, except with more bloodshed and less glue. Temujin was proclaimed Genghis Khan, which means universal ruler, a title he took quite literally. He embarked on a series of military campaigns that would make him the ruler of the largest empire the world had ever seen. It's like he looked at a map and said, I'll take one of everything. Genghis Khan's story is a testament to the power of resilience, ambition, and the ability to turn a bad start into an empire. So, next time you're feeling down about your circumstances, just remember Genghis Khan. He went from a wooden collar to ruling over millions, and all it took was a little determination and a large army. The indomitable Frida Kahlo. Let's paint our way into the life of Frida Kahlo, the Mexican artist who turned personal pain into iconic art. Frida's life was like a canvas of challenges, but she wielded her brush with the might of a warrior and the flair of a fashion icon. 
Born in 1907, Frida's journey into the art world was as unconventional as her paintings. At the age of six, she contracted polio, which left her with a lifelong limp. But Frida was like, limp? More like a unique strut? She didn't let it slow her down. If anything, it added to her distinctive presence. But wait, there's more. At 18, Frida was involved in a horrific bus accident, which left her with injuries that would affect her for the rest of her life. Bedridden and in a full body cast, Frida did what any of us would do. She started painting. Using a specially made easel and a mirror, she painted self-portraits because, as she said, I am the subject I know best. Talk about making the best out of a bad situation. Frida's paintings were bold, vibrant, and often filled with pain and passion. They were like visual diaries, capturing her physical and emotional struggles. Her art was a mix of surrealism and reality, kind of like dreaming with your eyes open. But Frida wasn't just about her art. She was a fashion icon, known for her colorful dresses and elaborate hairstyles. She embraced her traditional Mexican heritage and mixed it with a modern flair. It's like she was saying, I'll take my pain and turn it into art, and I'll look fabulous while doing it. Frida's personal life was as colorful as her paintings. Her tumultuous marriage to fellow artist Diego Rivera was a roller coaster of love, infidelity, and creative collaboration. It was like a soap opera, but with more art and less commercial breaks. Despite her physical ailments and emotional trials, Frida Kahlo remained a force of nature. Her indomitable spirit shone through her art, making her a symbol of resilience and creativity. So, next time you're feeling down, just ask yourself, what would Frida do? Probably paint a masterpiece and rock an awesome outfit.